Hi, we're Bruce and Cheryl. We moved from California to get away from the hustle and bustle of a fast-paced lifestyle and a not-so-perfect political climate to enjoy a slower speed, better values, and a rich Christian atmosphere. Join, Join us, us as, as we, we discover, discover our, our new environment, environment, rebuild our new-to-us home on two and a half acres, and enjoy the scenic southern landscape of central western Georgia. Today's going to be kind of an interesting day and kind of a fun day. We got lots of stuff going on. So this morning, I got a, a few errands I've got to do. Uh, I got to run down to the church this morning, open it up, and let the AC guys in. We got some AC unit issues that have to be fixed. Then I'm running to Home Depot and getting some materials. And this is what's exciting about the day. I'm getting a lot of the materials that I need for the electrical system so we can start getting the things ready for an inspection and then get uh, diverse power out here and swap over our power. That's going to happen within hopefully the next couple of days. I mean, by Monday uh, next week, I'm hoping that I can have inspector here and by middle of the week have diverse power here and change over the power. That's going to be a big step. And then I got Home Depot delivering more siding, more sheathing. Let's, let's go outside real quick. Tell you what, what's going on. So, I figured out some stuff that I wasn't really happy about figuring out uh, when I was looking at this back of the garage. So we had already purchased our windows based on um, based on the layout of the house and one of the windows was going into the garage wall so as you see behind me right now this window that's there that's going away because directly behind me there's supposed to be a window that looks out into the backyard from the laundry room when I build the laundry room the problem is and I know we've talked about the roof line where I've got to raise up the trusses uh, that land on this wall to make the roof line straight again and um, you know basically flatten the roof so that we don't have a whoop de doo in it which is great because it lifts up the ceiling height but remember I told you guys that there's a, a steel beam that runs across here and then a column here and a column there makes this big C over top of here and that carries the load of everything well it's apparently sunk into the ground like I thought it had um, and when I did the measurements hang on let me flip you guys around here when I did the measurements yesterday inside I measured from the foundation all the way up to the point where the uh, the wall intersects with the truss right here. And then I measured the same thing over here in this corner from foundation up to that intersect point. And sure enough, it's two and a half inches lower. And you know what? You look at this and you can't even tell, man. I mean, it looks, it looks straight. It looks level, but it's not. It's actually dropped down. And what's crazy is that when I measure the distance between the truss that lifted, there are two trusses that lifted when I lifted this out, this other wall right here. And I lifted this whole wall up, right? In fact, you can see right there, the bottom of the rim joist is at the level of the deck now, which it wasn't before. Before, that point right there was down below here, down below there. Anyway, so when all that was lifted up, it pulled that truss away from the top there and it's time to pull that one. You can see it splintering. But that one's still attached and all the way down they're still attached that's what's causing that whoop and I don't know if you can see it 
maybe you can see the hump there. I mean, I can see it with the naked eye. I don't know if the camera sees it quite the same. Anyway, so that, that weird thing has to be dealt with. Now that lifts up the trusses, but it doesn't lift up the beam. So that, that steel beam inside is still low. And of course, the idea was that that beam would be the header over the window. I wouldn't need to add a wood beam or anything. I would just put a two by four, well, I'll leave the two by four that's attached to the bottom of it and just take off the studs and um, you know frame like you would frame a window. Um, and then there you have it. Problem is, looking at all that looks fine and dandy because you're standing on the garage floor and you're looking at this. Let me turn around here. You're standing on the garage floor and you're looking at this going, yeah, there looks like plenty of room, right? And a window would be somewhere about where this panel is right now. Of course, that panel's going out away. That beam up there was gonna be the header, except when I measure the window, which is 36 inches down, and bring up the floor, which brings us up to this height right here, then when you're standing on this platform, the window is lower than the washer and dryer by two inches. So I've got to figure out how to raise up this whole beam assembly like I thought I was going to a long time ago. But it does kind of create an issue because that back wall there or that end wall there on the garage means that that whole truss assembly that's sitting on top of that wall, it's got to lift up on this back corner to bring this wall back in line, you know, flush but it's gonna create a separation back there that I've gotta fill in. Now I can reframe this wall. I was not planning on doing that, man. Remember, I've already got shear panel on, a, on the first corner rack here, and thank God I didn't go any further yet, but that creates a whole lot more work, and it's gonna take time. And I've gotta finish the framing over here to fill in this space, and basically what you see here in this separation will be reframed similar to this. So you see this assembly right here, which winds up making this neat little pop out right here. If I go to do that stuff, I have one other issue. I got all that insulation stacked up right there that I'm gonna use most of that in the floor what I can't use in the floor and cover up but beneath the subfloor, it'll probably get tossed. But, um, but it's in my way, man. I've got all that stuff right there in the way and I really need to move all my drywall from this corner because now I gotta work on this wall and figure out what to do with it. And, uh, and let me um, turn you around here for a second. And I got this down here that I'm opening up uh, like I talked about the other day. So there's gonna be right here a stem wall of concrete that runs across all the way back to where the platform, the raised floor is for the laundry, right? And then I gotta do the same thing. See those lines on the floor joist right there? That's gonna be the same point where the wall comes off right here and runs across and over and then it cuts across and makes this C shape that will be the floor assembly for the, the laundry room. So I'm clearing these out and I'll probably even cut out some of this floor, this concrete floor, because it'll be underneath just to give me some room to get my ductwork up underneath this right here. Um, and I got my plumbing lines will come in. Um, somewhere through here. In fact, there's actually already a whole, oh, let's add on it, never mind, I'm not going that low. I'll probably come through the, um, the floor joist right here to bring my water lines through. But, gosh, there's so many things, you know, one thing depends on something else and that depends on something else and this is wrong and that's wrong and it's just a series.
But, like I keep saying, once it's all done, this is going to be awesome. Oh, and I didn't show you this either, man. So yesterday, after I got done with some of the other stuff, I had you know, um, logistics that I had to take care of yesterday, so I didn't get a lot of building done. But I did get in here and get the next truss assembly on because I had gotten my new materials. So there it is. Let me step around this stuff here, not fall. But there it is. There's the new quadruple beam that runs across here. That again, on this end right here, like the other side, it carries the load of the tub for the bathroom. And, and I still have more grinding to do on these I beams as I move down. And it shouldn't take me very long. Let me turn around here where I can stand proper. It shouldn't take me very long to get the rest of these floor joists in. Once I get committed to it and get going, I can, I'll probably be able to knock out this section um, in a day, day and a half at the most. Um, so here we go, man. Off on our adventure. But I think this is the first time I took you guys on a journey. gonna pop down here real quick um, open up the church so that the AC guy can get in there and do his thing and then run to Home Depot and get the parts that they have for my electrical for the moment we're here at the church I'm gonna wait on the AC guy so I can let him in and we'll pick you guys back up in a little bit So I got part of my order from Home Depot. There was some stuff that they didn't have that I gotta go find somewhere else. Ground rods and a strain relief for uh, an overhead power line. Sort of see the the difference. That dark spot right there is the surface. You know, I bet this thing's never been pressure washed before. <laughs> no, I bet you it hasn't. Wow, what a difference! still trying to figure out this selfie stick here. See if I get better images and obviously going to do better on the tracking as far as the gimbal. Notice that as I walk through here I don't get that jarring motion and I can actually walk through and take video of the area. But there's going to be some uh, learning curves to this bad boy because I've never used one before and I got the wrong phone man. This phone is too old 
and doesn't work with all the technology that's available. So I have to work on that. But anyway, so looking at the back side of that new wall that I just sheared. And I can't can't zoom in and out like I'm supposed to be able to because this doesn't allow that kind of control because it's too old a phone. And I also got microphones which are not hooked up right now and I want to test that later just to see how the video comes out. But I mean so far the tracking thing works really good but I can't I'm supposed to be able to whoops I'm supposed to be able to um, flip it from front view to back view the camera but again this particular phone does not allow that kind of activation with the selfie stick that's a selfie stick on steroids or what it is I mean that pile that was gonna be a burn pile right there I was gonna burn all that stuff and the county says nope you can't do that man-made wood man-made wood huh it's not OSB it's um, they say it's treated wood it's not treated either but whatever so here's what I worked on yesterday and I basically pressure washed all the garbage off of this deck looking a whole lot better but it does have some issues as you can see right here cracks and spalling I'm not too concerned about it um, the spalling because I'm going to be putting tile down on this like a Saltillo Mexican tile pavers or whatever but I've also got to seal all these lines right here I've got some grout caulking and I just have to wait until I got a fully dry day and that this is all fully dried out. I'll probably grind open these cracks right here and fill those as well with a sealer, a crack filler. And then of course right along the wall here, I have to fill that crack in. Oh great, we got the rain coming back again. Anyway, I gotta fill that crack in and then uh, use expanding foam in there and then fill the top of it with some type of stretchy caulking that'll seal it. This is another thing here. So I got me a new piece of wood to go here and I got um, some parts for the electrical. So you can see the old one I put up here I painted with the panel on there. I should have had the panel off before I painted but it's not long enough because uh, the new panel that I got, let me go take a look at it. It's a 200 amp service disconnect. So the power company provided uh, the meter box right there, that top one. The bottom one I had to purchase. And then today, let me turn around here. Today I went to Home Depot and I got the nipple and I got the adapter to attach to the panel but what they didn't have and what didn't come with this um, Midwest box this 200 amp service box is a service entrance so let me show you a service entrance port All right. that guy right there is a service entrance port it's two inch now that one right there is made by Millbank for the Millbank I know that's upside down but for the Millbank product and it fits. I can't interchange that with this other one because it's got a different pattern. And I went by an electrical supply place and ordered one that's an A type, you know, with the four holes. So the Millbank service entrance port won't work on the on the Midwest box. And I'm hoping the one that I just ordered will work with it because it didn't come with one. It just came with a blank plate. 
I don't need a blank plate. Hey, Sunny. Want this pickle juice? I might have a little pickle juice. Okay, because I was going to dump it, and I thought, nah, yeah, better. Especially with what happened the other night, man. What happened? When I had atrophy in both my legs. Oh, well, that was because you overworked. Yeah. And they cooled off, and then they tightened up. That's what happens to me, too. Sunny, are you ready to go out and kill something? No, no more chipmunks. No? Can I throw this little thing away? Yeah, that stuff can go. Here the birdies. Can we get a birdie? Cheerio, 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 cheerio. You seem totally disinterested. He seems totally disinterested. How how come? Whoop. There you go. There you go. Mama says you can't have the bird. What do you think about that? Look, man. You're on film, so you should act like you're on film. Act for me, baby. Do some acting. Come on, man. You're on camera here. You're supposed to do something fantastic. I'm telling you, what a learning curve. Still trying to figure this machine out. Um, so we're going to head over to our buddy Travis's. He's got some crown molding he needs to do in his bedroom, and he wants to put in some new flooring. We're going to go give him a hand. Um, Cheryl's in the house getting some vitamins that she forgot to take earlier. And uh, then we're going to get on the road and head over there. So here we go. We're off and running. See our friends. I was looking for sunshine, but I didn't see him. I thought maybe I'm always looking for sunshine. I thought maybe he might want to go inside, but now nah, he's too busy chasing squirrels and chipmunks and lizards. It's a midnight snack. It makes me dizzy. I know how I am about things moving when we're driving. I don't like it. Especially because I've got two things going on.
This was a complete room last night at 8 o'clock. Yeah, we're all the carpet out. So 8.30 when you sent that picture, you had just started tearing out carpet. Yeah. <laughs> Too late to turn back now. <laughs> yeah. You just got to be right out of one of the There's Lizzie. Come here. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Bruce. How do you like whoever did this cop job? How do you like this cop job? Let me see. Oh, okay. uh, that's professional right there. A professional cop job. Professional grade. Who did that? I don't know. Whoever on the house, what we did. Did you see my new toy? I do. Is that your handy dandy? <laughs> yeah, this is handy dandy toy. Sorry. DJ, what do you think? If I want to make good quality videos, do I need good quality equipment? Hudson. You're not sucking me into this conundrum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're asking the entirely wrong person. Yeah. He's all about he's, he's all about saving money. No, he ain't. How about two hundred dollar Bibles? Oh, that well. So all I did was buy a six hundred dollar selfie stick. Omg! And a four hundred. Does it automatically oh, kind of keep it from moving around? And, and stuff? a phone, four hundred dollar phone. What? So there's a thousand dollars just like that. Boom. And yeah. See, is that? I'm not going to sit here and record you all afternoon, so you're going to have to put the toy away. Put the toy away. <laughs> <laughs> She's dead. Hey guys how you doing and good afternoon been a long day hasn't been as much accomplished as I was hoping to in the last couple of days but we've had some sporadic rain and I've had a lot of things going on helping some people out doing some stuff but man it's hot and humid today it's hard to get anything done without just pouring in sweat so let me show you something here real quick and turn the camera around. All right, so I came out here earlier and I did the foam fill. So trying to close up this gap. And I've got to close up this gap right here by doing some framing. All right, close that in. But I'm not sure how I'm going to complete the framing since some of this needs to be removed. Now I know well I can't secure, the thing is I can't secure to this wall if I'm going to be raising that wall. If I've got to take and, and um, jack up this whole wall to raise up that roof line. So like I said I've, I've got that um, expansion foam in there. And then I'm going to come back, I'm going to shave this off and then come back in here and fill that with caulking, the top of it with caulking to seal the open core. I mean it's closed cell, I think that's closed cell foam, but it still needs to be capped with something so I'm going to cap it off with some caulking and then uh, I've got to do all these cracks and stuff. So I got that done. Then uh, come around here. There you go. Pay attention. My new phone's coming so when my new phone gets here I'll have more control over these functions but so I went and got all the parts that I needed to do the tie-in between the two panels and I got a new piece of wood so you can see there that wood goes all the way 
it's secured to the wall and then uh, the panels are secured to it and I just have to get that um, service entrance cap that goes on here with a two inch thread and then thread that two inch pipe into it and then if I back out here and take a look here and you can see we got the service entrance all the way up with the service head weather head up there and uh, tensioning um, wire I don't know I can't remember what they're called but it's to tension the uh, the guy wire which is basically your ground or neutral neutral and ground anyway so that's done also you see the ground wire there going to that ground plug or that ground rod the ground rod's already driven in so that's done then uh, I ordered some more Georgia Pacific force field so I got a few more sheets of that should be enough to do that whole wall right there including the gable top this whole wall right here fill in all the gaps right there and there should be enough to do that whole end wall down there and of course I can't really do that wall until I'm ready to lay my floor but I'm getting close I've got to uh, I've got my bricks down here now my uh, pier point I do have to jack that up a little bit, the deck out there up a little bit to be able to get that one brick slid back in. I had to notch it down, but it's still not notched deep enough for the deck, but the deck is low. So I jack the deck up just a hair and slide that underneath there and then put my boards on top of it or whatever I need. I'm obviously going to need a, a, a solid block. And I think I've got solid blocks, unless I used them already. I, I think I might have brought them in already. Let's take a look. If you don't know what a solid is, that's a solid that's broken half. And I, I could always use that. I could always push the two halves together. It's just a base. You know me, such a perfectionist, I like to have good new solid material but yeah I guess I already brought those down here because I needed some for that pillar right there which still needs to be um, braced up and finished it's too high, it's too low for another solid too high for a single board I got to put a couple boards I put another solid down here on that to fill that gap so I'm out of solids so I either need to go buy a solid and put it underneath there or just build that up with wood. Got plenty of wood to do it now. I got more pressure treated left over. And as we bounce back over here, you see I got some more floor joists done. So I've got a double next to the double. So this double increases across here. Um, I'm trying to remember what the purpose was doing over there. It might just be because I don't, I don't, I wanted to be able to carry the load well across this section where those beams, the I-beams down below, have got a dip in it because of those, um, if you remember those seams. And the, the next double that I'll do will be over here at that wall intersect. So I got a few more floor joists. I think I've got one, two, three, four. I got four floor joists left that I can use from the old ones. So I'm going to be filling in a lot of new ones. And I always take off some more and utilize them and start building out from there because this area right here doesn't need super stout floor. You know, I want it, I want it well done, but um, it doesn't have to be like all brand new wood. But I know there's a few pieces I have to change, but I got, I got plenty, I think, 
I've got four new ones right here already cut to length. And uh, what is that five? Is that ten? Yeah, I got ten um, new ones that still need to be cut. So I should have enough to finish off this the floor joist on this side here. And if the weather's still holding and it's dry enough, I can caulk that edge out here. I'll do that and caulk all those joints. Try to mitigate all this water that keeps pouring underneath the house at the back patio house intersect. Hopefully that foam and uh, caulking on top seals it up enough to just keep that water away from here. I'm just hoping that I don't cause a drain point right here where water runs down and dumps underneath. It's vice versa at the other end, but hopefully at the other end, it'll dump off into the corner to the outside. Let's go take a look at that real quick. And if, you, if I haven't mentioned this before, so that little um, block, block um, so that little stake right there, that water line right there, and this stake right here, these are the corner points and the distance away from the house that the front deck will be. So I don't know if you can quite get that distance in right there, but so that's 10 feet away from the house. So the front porch, the front deck is going to be 10 feet deep and it's going to be 32 feet long. And that's what those are there for. That water line is a direct water line off of the main service. So there's no shutoff for that. I have to turn off the pump and let it bleed down before I can open that up. But that'll get a, a hose bib that's separate from the rest of the water service. So if I have to turn the water service off to the house, say it like at that valve right there, I shut that off, it isolates the house, but I still have running water outside to a hose bed. If you ask me, I think that's a smart move. I'm siding. But here's the corner that I'm talking about. So I've got to get a I gotta get something here that blocks this off across here. And then hopefully if the water dumps off, it'll dump off right here in this corner. Hey, I got a phone call coming in guys. So hey, we're gonna end that video right here. And I just wanted to give you guys um, just a little heads up that um, I know that the, the video that you just saw didn't give you a lot of information about what's going on. Um, all of these things occurred um, just before I had my accident inside the trailer. And you're gonna see that coming up in the next video. Um, but, uh, we just so much appreciate you guys coming along for the journey. Um, I hope you're enjoying the content. Um, I know that right now, up to this point, it's been pretty boring. And to be honest with you, it's gonna get a little more boring on a couple of segments because when I injured myself, I was down for, oh, I think I lost, what, about 10, 10 to 12 weeks. I did some videoing, but uh, it was it was bad. It was <laughs> it was all bad.